Hey everyone! I'm back because last video got more than two views, so that was awesome. And I wanted to touch on something that I mentioned briefly in the previous video, which is the UC Davis course catalog. Now, this thing is kind of a monster, but I want to give you guys the tools to be able to navigate it for one because the website is pretty confusing and it also will answer a lot of your questions. So for this is going to be a really good video for people that aren't necessarily chem majors as well because I do understand that we have wonderful advisors but they do sometimes make mistakes. So we're going to go kind of look at like the quote unquote course bible for UC Davis and kind of understand where advisors get their information, talking to majors, and you can also double check your stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys. So the easiest way to find your course catalog is to just Google it, UC Davis course catalog. I'm going to break this down similarly to the previous video. There's three reasons you pretty much go to the course catalog. One is to look at the outline of your major, figure out which classes are required. Another one is to figure out your prerequisites, and the last is to look at GEs. I will be providing a PDF that kind of outlines what GEs should look like. I got it from my freshman handbook, and I will also make it available to you all. So let's go ahead and get started and look at our majors from the course catalog. So this is departments, programs, and degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to Farm Chem because uh, that's my major. I know it well. It's part of my department. But hopefully things I say about this major will also apply if you're not a, a chemistry major or just in general. I'm going to go ahead and break this down. So why they put information on the first tab? No one knows. No one really cares. Like this could easily be the last tab and no one would look at it. Welcome to the UC Davis course catalog. So we're going to go ahead and look at Bachelor of Science. Okay, so the course catalog in certain areas is actually pretty easy to understand, but there are some discrepancies, and I would like to give a little bit of description for certain classes and when you're going to take what. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So for the Chem 2 series, I'm a chem major. I didn't have to take the honors chemistry series. I loved chemistry. I did not do super hot on the AP exam. If you got a five on the AP exam, I would highly recommend taking the honors chemistry. I think you'll just find it a little bit more engaging. But if you just kind of want to cruise for your first part of like getting into chemistry, getting into college, the chemistry series is quality. And if I can highlight, there you go. Another thing is that you can start in honors chemistry and then drop down to general chemistry if it just seems like too much work and you'd rather shift your focus and, you know, have time to be a well-rounded college student. For our physics, I took the seven series. I'm not a physics kind of girl. And the way that it's done at Davis is unique. If you're a transfer student and you get to avoid doing physics at UC Davis, props to you. I'm gonna leave that at that. But same thing, you can pick either the seven or the nine series. And then there's math. So this takes a little bit more specification. So short calc, you can do one of either of these three series, either 17, 16, or 21. Now, the 17 series, specifies for biology and medicine. So if you are pre-health, if you are pre-farm, pre-dentistry, those kinds of things, they, I believe, would recommend the 17 series. I would have to double check with HPA, which is our health professions and advising office. They have their own website, and they also have really good guides for if you'd like to plan out within your four-year plan. There's going to be specific classes depending on if, let's say, you're pre-med. There will be certain classes for different programs, and they can also help you organize that. As a pharmaceutical chemistry major and a peer advisor, I do have a lot of students that are pre-pharmacy, so I am familiar with a couple of the classes that overlap, and I try to recommend those. I know that's their track. Now, here gets 
here it gets a little confusing. So for the previous chem, physics, math, another thing I'd like to add is you do have to finish your math before you can start physics. And if you decide to do the physics nine series, it requires extensive math past what your major requires in order to take the nine series. That's why so many students do take the seven series. When we have farm chem majors that choose the nine series, it's typically because they came from ACS and they just choose that to also satisfy within their major. For biology, I took just Biz 2A and Biz 2B. I believe there's been an update recently where if you do choose to go through the whole series, you must do 2B before 2C. I also am um, of the belief that you can do 2A whenever you would like within the series intermittently, but in order to take 2C, you have to take 2B beforehand. For this farm chem major, you have to do Biz 2A, that's required. For pre-health, they recommend a year of biology. For stats, if you took AP stats, and got a four or higher, I believe, you're good to go in this category. You just choose one stats class. If you're really interested in statistics, go ahead and shoot for the statistics 100, but stats 13 will serve you well. Okay, so now we're getting into a little bit more of like, how do I read this part of the course catalog? So all of these classes, in org, farm chem series, the bio chem lab, these are all mandatory for this major. And then we kind of go back into, okay, choose a series, either 107 or 110. The thing that is slightly confusing is like, oh, well, I can just choose either one, right? Now, that's where you have to go look at your prereqs. So for 107, if you did any physics, you can take 107 after you finish your physics series. But for 110, you have to have done the nine series. And now we move to OCHEM. So the way this is formatted is a little interesting. These are technically like two different series. So I did the 128s and 129s as concurrently as I could. So I did 128A and 129B within the same quarter. Same for the B portion. But for 128C and 129C, I took those in different quarters. Now that's an advantage because it's a little bit more flexibility. You do get an individual grade for your lab. And this series is definitely more geared towards chemists. And then um, the 118 series, I didn't take it, but I had a lot of friends that took it and loved it. It's hard, organic chemistry is hard, guys. That's why so many people go like, I'm gonna be pre-med, take OCHEM. And as my history teacher from high school would say, now nah, I'm a history teacher. <laughs> So, um, I would say, though, Davis does do a good job of giving support and resources. The chem department specifically, because it is an upper division class, for tutors. Students have taken the courses with the professors before, got, received good grades, worked for good grades, you know, along the same lines. And they also help fellow students. So, there isn't as much support as within, like, the general chemistry and general biology series because you'll see tutors within the dorms and just tutoring services on campus for physics as well but it's mostly lower division once you get to upper division you typically have to hire like, a tutor or go to lots of office hours and sometimes there's conflicting times and along those lines so we hopefully will be offering peer tutors even if everything is online this upcoming year and i'm in charge of organizing that Boy, oh boy. <laughs> so things to do. Now, here's like the super confusing part for this major specifically. And I would imagine for certain degrees that where there's more flexibility of choice, this is what it looks like as well. So my hope is this is as complicated as it gets. And if I can break it down, you guys will be good for any other major that you decide to look at within the catalog. So Choose two. I personally did Biz 102 and Chem 150. Now, 
you will also see both of these classes within this lower section as well. So there's Biz 102 again, and Chem 150 is actually down here as well. This isn't super updated. I believe there's also, there's missing Mike 102. That's a good reason to come into the advising office because we have the most updated requirements. Another way of checking your degrees, your degree and your certification classes and making sure it's the most updated there is a system in place called my degree and they try really hard to make sure this is efficient have computer software that runs through your classes it's already with some within the system check your progress it's not the most accurate there are mistakes so please don't bank your degree on verification through my degree because a major advisor, your major advisor has to certify your degree by hand before you graduate. Specifically because my degree is not 100%. So please keep that in mind, be methodical. Worst case scenario, you see us a whole bunch, you tell us how great you're doing and you're good to go. We're here to help you guys and make sure that you're gonna get to where you need to be. Okay, so back to breaking this down. I personally did these two guys, but you also see them again down here. So that means I have to select different classes than the same two that I, cho I chose from above. You could pick one from this category, another one from here, and another one from here. You don't have to pick one from each section. Theoretically, if you didn't do Biz 102 within this section, you could do all four of these and you'd be good to go. Same for this. So the way that they organize it's quite confusing because from these, let's see, six, like 10 or so classes, as long as you choose four of them, and you can kind of see in the tally over here, it's 11 to 16 units, which is slightly confusing, but it is just at least four classes. So, so hopefully that's a little less confusing now. And now we're going to go look at prerequisites and kind of how to navigate class by class. So let's go ahead and head back to Google. I swear if you use this like drop down side menu, you're going to get lost. I've done it way too many times. So just default back to Google. Courses by subject code is the easiest way to find stuff. I usually actually end up checking a lot of prerequisites for the upper division ACS chemistry classes because we do have a fair amount of those majors and I'm just not super familiar because I don't have to take the classes. So this is also a good place to see for incoming freshmen specifically if you don't remember exactly what your score was that you needed on your placement test in order to qualify. Uh, like for right here, it's like you need 24 better. I believe it's about 50%. And there's also just way more description. So you can also decipher the differences between general chemistry and honors chemistry if you want just more written detail. And I'm just trying to look for a good section that explains prerequisites. Okay, so we'll look at this 103 class. So prerequisites are within this top line. And that just means you got to do the class. You have to do the prerequisites before you put this class within your schedule. So it just kind of helps you plan out the timing. That's why you can't do like four chem classes in a quarter and try to every quarter for like two years and try to get your degree in two is because you have to take these prerequisite classes. So that part's pretty straightforward. It's when I look at prereqs, it's usually a short little detour. I'm double checking to make sure um, my prior knowledge is correct. And now, the part that I bet you're all waiting for is GE classes. Now, I did a little investigating earlier on like, wow, this should be well outlined, right? Ladies and gents, I've been using this course catalog for like three years. And you can, it feels like reading a contract, honestly. 
She's like, these are your terms and conditions. I was like, yeah. Um, grass. I don't know about y'all. Actually, I might know a little bit because y'all are on YouTube, but I'm a visual learner. And I apologize that it looks a little gross. I had to erase stuff I wrote in it. At least I wrote in pencil from my freshman year. But I got this in a handbook. I looked for this PDF online and couldn't find it anywhere. And I was just like, why? It's so clear and concise and y'all can print this out or, you know, upload it to whatever program you want, fill in some stuff just to kind of get a sense of like, what are GEs? How do they work? What are the categories? And even in my degree, which I mentioned earlier, they kind of do an okay job at breaking down what exactly your GEs are. But I just think this is pretty because, you know, it makes a lot of sense. So for this top section, which is, which is your topical breath, you're going to need at least 12 units. So even if you're not an arts and humanities person, you got to find classes that after them and you can look at them in the description of the course catalog as well. I believe it's easiest to see on Schedule Builder. It's going to be in parentheses within the course description. It's either AH or SE or SS. So for me, since I am a STEM major, my science and engineering topical breath is pretty much automatically satisfied by just completing my major degree. Now, in terms of social sciences and arts and humanities, those are the ones that you have to fill. So even I have had friends that are like, I'm doing 12 units of this and I, I'm done. I'm out. Which is totally fine uh, because that's just not their strength. But you do have to be aware that you have to do at least 12 units. This chart, I think, just gives you a better idea of what GEs are, what they look like, how they are relevant in terms of your major within your college. And I think that wraps us up today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope to get you guys another video in by next Friday. All right, the bun is up and we're ready to go. Oh, oh my God, to wrap up, we need to do GEs. So for choosing a C, whoa. Gosh, I have a gnarly scratch on my leg. What the heck is that from?